Okay, first question, Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Cliff, over the course of the remainder of the regular season, your group will be playing against some teams, you know, fighting for their playoffs lives or for their postseason positioning. Just how important is it for your group to be aware of that and, and to match the intensity that some of these teams will be playing with over the, the final stretch? Yeah, I, in, in the most general sense, I think that what we have to strive to do is put 48 minutes together, you know, and that's a simple way to say it. But like even watching the other night um, against, you know, an Atlanta team who's very good and playing well, we had many, you know, many segments of the game, you know, where, where we did a good job and we played well. We just had, you know, two, about four and a half minute segments where, you know, we really struggled on offense, which is, you know, I mean, a lot of it can be, you know, can be fixed or improved. And then, you know, we didn't play the same level of defense. Now, the other night, like I just shared with the guys, Atlanta's a top 10 defense, uh, ten, top 10 offensive team, as, as is New Orleans. Uh, our rim protection was top five in the league. Uh, Three-point defense, which has been a problem, top five in the league. The reality is the fouling crushed us. And, you know, we couldn't rebound. The rebounding was just, you know, I mean, they had 18 offensive rebounds. And they all rebounded us by whatever it was, 26 rebounds. I mean, you have no chance. So, um, you know, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's good, but the biggest thing, or, you know, what I'm going to keep the messaging is going to be for right now, don't give possessions away, uh, you know, play good two-way basketball and we got to put 48 minutes together. Chris Cuff, 24 flips. Hey coach. Um, just wanted to ask you, you know, uh, no T. Ross tonight, no James Ennis. Can you talk about those guys? I wish I could talk about them getting ready to play. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, you know, no MCW. Uh, they're all in there getting treatment, actually. James uh, is closer than I would say Terrence or, or Mike for sure. Mike would be the furthest away. I, I actually think James felt a lot better today and he was able to do some shooting and stuff on the on the court with Ty Corbin. So I think he's closer. But um, I mean, obviously, you know, we miss those guys. And, and uh, it's, it's, you know, I think it's important for the younger guys to be out on the floor with veteran players. It gives them a better chance to, you know, function and, and it helps everybody play better. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Steve, this is the first time the Magic have ever played a game against Zion Williamson. And I'm curious whether there are anybody in your memory banks that you would liken him to or compare him to. No, no. I mean, an incredibly unique talent. Um, you know, he's averaging 20 points in the paint per game. And the last guy who did that was Shaquille. Well, think about that. Uh, you know, incredibly quick first step to either hand, uh, you know, instincts which allow him to spin off guys, drive around guys, incredible athleticism, you know, and he plays with great energy. So, um, you know, they, again, you won't be able to guard him with one guy. And then so much of it will still get back to Brandon Ingram. Similar is what we did poorly the other night. Can't foul him. Can't let him get fast break points. Can't take, you can't, can't let him get second chance points. And Zion also, like a lot of good scores, he's terrific without the ball. He's very good moving without the ball. And you can't, you got to limit those cutting baskets also. James Hill, BNC Sports. Hey, Cliff, uh, the next man up philosophy and opportunity. Uh, there's some young guys with Orlando Magic across their chest, and they're ready to play. Uh, can you talk about guys who – really want to fill in some of those gaps and go out and compete and, and help them magic win? Oh, for sure. And I, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, they understand that th this is a great opportunity for a number of guys who are going to be getting bigger, have bigger roles right now and getting more minutes than they would be in, in, in normal situations. And I think if you saw practice or, you know, even, you know, today, the walkthrough, you know, they're putting a lot into it. They're, they're, they're approaching things the right way. Um, and it's, it's good to see. This isn't, you know, like when we're not playing well, this isn't attitudinal or effort-based, you know, it's just, uh, 
you know, we don't have a lot of room for error, you know, and uh, this isn't a league, obviously, where you want to be playing a bunch of 22 year olds. It's just not. Um, but we can get better and we can play better. And I think certainly the attitude they have and the approach they have, I think will allow us to play better and better over this last stretch of games. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Rob Parks, 48minutes.com. Hey, Coach. I want to, uh, good to see you too. I want to speak on um, Zion and so, so Zion's averaging 27. Him and Lazo are really clicking. Do you plan on throwing double teams at them, going man up? Like, how, how do you plan on defending them tonight? I don't think you can. Well, yeah, we're going to, we, we worked on two or three different things. And I just don't, I, I think you have to. I, I just think that you can't, um, have a game plan for for those guys where uh, you you just think you're going to go out and play your base defense. I mean, uh, the way our league is now, to be honest, I think it's hard to do that in any game, but uh, they have to know there's a chance that you're coming with a second defender uh, or they're going to get in rhythm, and you have to have ways to try to keep them off balance. Philip Rossman, Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Hey, Coach, um, obviously injuries have probably, you know, thrown some of your ideas and playing groups that you wanted to have uh, out the window for, for the time being at least. But what's sort of your philosophy, especially with how little practice time there is in putting playing groups together? Do you try to experiment with different, you know, player combinations, especially with some of the young guys playing together? Or how do you, how do you piece together that rotation and, and, and test things out with, with the limited practice time you guys have? Yeah, 100%. And, um, you know, tonight we're going to sub differently than we did in Atlanta. Actually, the way... You know, to be honest, is there's never one reason why you lose a game, but the way I subbed was is just not going to work. You know, like you, the 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 combinations of players to me is everything. You know, and one thing that's hard is uh, it's like right now, like the other night when Gary Harris is on the floor. You know, we play a lot better. We function better. He's He's a veteran player with incredibly high IQ and he stabilizes everything. And he also understands, Hey, we've had three bad possessions. You know, you know, we've got to get a good shot here. And that's the tougher part about having, you know, so many younger guys because you want to see who can play well together. But also the reality is also this, some guys play in a manner, they're going to help the other guys play better no matter who they play with. Some other guys, especially young guys, when they're young, they're hard to play with. And when they don't make shots, they're not very good. So, I mean, I can see a lot of that. I could see it in training camp. I could see it, you know, when you get guys. And I think that a lot of times, uh, like the chemistry part comes, you know, as two really good players play together. But, you know, to, when, it, when it's developed, I mean, so, so much of it, I guess, Philip, what I'm saying is it's, it's intelligent play. You know, it's intelligent play. It's purposeful play. And that's the hardest thing when you have a lot of young guys. You know, that's been, to, to be honest, has been one of the many, many things that I, I've liked uh, and, and uh, like more and more every night about Wendell. You know, Wendell has IQ, you know. Wendell has a feel for basketball and there's two parts of that. There's organizational, which is where we're lacking right now because you talked about, we have a lack of practice time. Uh, but then there's also when they're just playing ball, you know, when he's playing ball, I watch out there when he's open, he shoots it. When it's not, he dra like it all makes sense to me. Right. And organizationally you show him something once or twice and it's done, you know, like he's, he's far, far ahead of the game. And uh, those are the guys that you can win with. Dan Savage, Project.com. Cliff, the, the team extended a second 10 day to, to Robert Franks today. You know, what, what, what has Frank shown you uh, during his time here? Uh, he too is bright. Uh, you know, we had him in training camp. I liked him there. He's got size, he can really shoot the ball. Um, he's a good worker. Uh, I mean, to me, for a guy like him, because he can, you know, if you watched in the, excuse me, the bubble, the way he shot the ball, particularly in the playoff games at his size, you know, that's what gives him a chance to be an NBA player. And uh, then it's just a question of putting all the other things together. You know, tonight, again, will be good opportunities. He's playing against 
legit legitimate backup players every night. And uh, I, I like the way he's approaching the whole thing. Any final questions? Okay, thanks everyone.